Hello, it's Saturday, February 3rd. I'm working on my book. All right. I've got an hour and a half until my alarm goes off because I've got to do a couple of calls today for feedback on papers and <clears throat> for uh, writing papers, editing papers. So got an hour and a half right now and hopefully I can put in some more time. Um, there may be some times where it's like later at night or earlier in the morning where it can't be real loud, but maybe I can do a quiet writing session. <laughs> It'd be great to get in a few hours, um, like four hours today and four hours tomorrow, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, <sighs> okay. Um, in the dentist's office yesterday, uh, with a dental pick in my mouth, I started thinking about some of the dumb, funny things I was thinking about yesterday, and I started laughing. I was like, okay, i got to knock this out, or I'm going to end up with a dental pick down my throat. Um, so that was a good sign. Uh, getting ready to sit down here is still... Um, it's not nerve-wracking. It's just like I feel totally uninspired. And I was just thinking that every time, I was just remembering, oh yeah, I've tried starting a blog multiple times, and I start writing blog posts and I like throw it away. Uh, it's like every time I give a talk, that's at all high pressure, and high pressure doesn't mean that it's actually of any uh, real significance. It's just like in my head is high pressure. Every time I give a talk like that, there's there's always there always comes this time where I'm like. Maybe I'll get sick before I have to give the talk when well, it's like six hours away. Or uh, maybe there'll be some sort of extreme weather event and, you know, it's going to be canceled and I don't have to give the talk, right? So I, I start thinking these thoughts. Um, and then I just have to kind of power through it. It's sort of like I was saying when I'd give a talk, there'd be this point where there'd be a, I'd pause for a second and I'd be like, what am I doing? Why are, how are words coming out of my mouth? Uh, how does that even work? You know, I get kind of, um, like I could sort of see myself from the outside and thinking, what what an absurd situation. So that still happens when I'm giving, you know, talks that I they think are kind of high pressure for me. And I'm not saying that that's what's happening right now with the writing, but I, I start thinking things like, well, don't I have a draft of another book I started? Maybe I can do that instead. Or, well, I've got stuff to do this morning. Uh, maybe I should write the book later. How about after 5 p.m.? You know, then maybe I'll write the book. So, you know, for me at least, that's like a constant. For anything I'm doing that's at all making things or all creative, that's a constant challenge um you know it's just that for for giving talks i have deadlines <clears throat> and i can just like power through it partly just because i know that's going to happen it's sort of like how how um at some point i knew i would kind of freeze up with the talks so i don't know maybe that's something to talk about maybe that's something to talk about I'm not sure how to spell Alex Honnold. I think that's it. <clears throat>
actually, that would be the ideal video, right? It's like I could record this late at night or early in the morning. It might be boring to listen to, but the point is the ideal video is just the sound of my keys, isn't it? That really means I'm making progress. If I'm telling a lot of stories about how I'm getting stuck, that might not work. Although for this book, maybe I can be reflective about it and sort of go meta. And if I have these stories, um, maybe some of those stories go in here. I don't know. All right, well, that's pretty accurate. Okay. Here's a question for myself.
there's this interesting web page by someone at Stanford on productive procrastination. And I'm a world-class procrastinator when it comes to things like this. Obviously, that's like the whole reason I'm doing all this kind of heroic you know, attempts to finish things. Um, and in, in the, uh, in the book and the web page is basically the same idea as just the book's a little longer, you know, that one of the argue one of the ideas is in, in the book is that, um, you procrastinate things on things because you're a perfectionist and, and it's really a self-protection mechanism because if as a perfectionist, you realize that you could spend unbounded amounts of time on pretty much anything. Like I need to, to read drafts of two papers today. Right. And I started thinking about that and I spent a lot of time thinking, well, how am I, how in the world am I going to do that? And the reason I was thinking about it was if I'm not careful, I know myself, I could spend all day. I mean, literally all day reading one of those drafts. Um, and so somehow I got to, I've got to deal with that problem and I have to deal with that problem all the time because everything I do, I could spend unbounded amounts of time on and I just can't do that. So the argument is that if you're a really good procrastinator, the reason you wait until the last minute to do something isn't because you're lazy and it's not even necessarily because you're scared. It's a self-protection mechanism. So you don't spend an unbounded amount of time doing this thing. If, if you have three months to do something and you wait to start it until four months before the deadline, and it's a hard deadline. I'm sorry, four, four hours before the, for the deadline, that is you saying, I am going to spend no more than four hours on this. And you don't trust your self-discipline to, um, uh, you know, so you're going to use external deadlines as self-discipline. Or to make up. So I, I found that useful. I mean, I, I think at some sense, I, some sense I, I knew that, um, the example that he gives is, you know, he's asked to review a paper, I think, um, that was the example. And he's got say three months to review this paper for a journal or whatever. And he's like, Oh, this is going to be the greatest review ever. The review is going to be so great that the editor is going to write me a letter thanking me and you know, the, the authors are going to acknowledge me specially. And uh, let's see there, the, this paper cites like 17 other papers that I haven't read. So step one is I'm going to read all 17 of the related work. Well, wait, Hmm. Actually I need infrastructure for that. So I better start up a server and I can, you know, have a content management system for all of my notes and for the 17 papers. And, and what actually happens is he doesn't do anything until, you know, he starts getting nasty grams from the editor saying, Hey, look, you know, your review, uh, <laughs> your review was due, you know, like three days ago. Um, can we expect it sometime soon? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just sits down and does it. And it's a fine review. And the question is like, why couldn't I have done that to begin with? And it was because he turned it into, you know, I'm going to win the Nobel Prize of re reviewing um, instead of let me just review it and then move on, right? And so this is, um, you know, that saying, you know, if you need something done quickly, give it. 
to the busiest person you know. You know, that's the, um, I mean, I see that myself. So one of the interesting things for me is trying to write this book and trying to make three videos a day. And then, you know, not only do I record the videos, but I have to level the audio and upload them to YouTube and post something in the Discord, right? So there's like, there's just a certain amount of stuff I've got to do. And, you know, doing my normal work and everything else, uh, I think it's actually been helpful in a way. Like, like when I remember in high school, it was often the case that the athletes um, also had the best grades. And I th the, the explanation I heard was, well, you know, they're busy practicing or they're on the road. They just like can't mess around. You know, they just got a certain amount of time. And so when it's study time, they're studying. Now, I'm not saying every athlete had that, but if you looked at the very best students in my high school, almost all of them were athletes. Um, and, uh, you know, they just didn't have time to mess around. I mean, uh, you know, part of it also is they were competing at a high level or whatever, but I think it was also this, this time boundedness. Um, and, and I've noticed just myself like last night, it's like, okay, I'm going to cook dinner and wash the dishes and take out the trash, even though it's not trash night. Like I'm doing all those things without complaint as quickly as I can. I mean, I'm not doing it sloppily. I'm taking care, but you know, bam, bam, bam. Okay, now get to emails. Now, you know, I've been putting this off on my to-do list. Uh, let me just go ahead and and do that. Um, and the reason is because I, I just don't have time to mess around. So, you know, not having time or overthink or... I call it Nobel Prize eyes. Yeah. I'll just leave it like that. And part of it is, this is really advice to myself. You know, I was reading yet another book last night by the same author on writing. The author of How to Write a Novel in 10 Days and How to Write a Novel in 7 Days, both of which are coming. I've read two of his books in the last two days. They're actually pretty good. Uh, I could probably distill both books down to, you know, a total of five pages. Um, but that's okay. They're short enough I could read in one sitting. And they're also exemplars of like, hey, here's a book that obviously he finished quickly because he kept <laughs> he keeps talking about it. Um, it's like, don't have time for chapter titles. But uh, <clears throat> I don't really know where I was going with this. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Okay. So there's not a lot of lulls right now, but that's okay. I'm writing. <clears throat> I don't have to lull if I'm writing.
Okay, well that's pretty good. I wasn't talking a whole lot and I wrote some words.
I guess this is turning into an ASMR episode. <laughs> the greatest radio, Will Types. <clears throat> and put this on in the background. Stress relief, trying to go to sleep.
<clears throat> okay, I'm uh, making some progress writing. Now, the book I just read is on writing in, into the dark or writing in the dark. I forget the exact phrase, but it's about novels where you don't outline everything. You just start writing. I don't think of what I'm doing is outlining, though. And then the author's like, well, sometimes I outline. <laughs> so, um, but I'm not really outlining. I'm figuring out what I want to talk about and coming up with stories and so forth. So... I consider that different. This is how I plan a talk. I plan a talk very similarly to this, and then I'll organize the thoughts. So, you know, I've got some idea how to plan a talk at this point. For for good or for bad, uh, someone, some people don't like my talks. That's fine. They don't have to. Um, but some people won't like this book. That's fine. It's not, not for everyone. And uh, there was one great piece of advice in the book, which I had been thinking about, which is, the only writer, or sorry, the only audience you should think of, at least for a novel, and I think with this book, same thing, the only audience you should be thinking of is yourself. Maybe yourself earlier, right? So if I'm giving advice, what advice would I send back uh, to myself? <clears throat> maybe when I was starting grad school or undergrad, or maybe when I was working in industry or a hobbyist, whatever. Um, and, I, and that feels right. So I, mean, I want to avoid being overindulgent. I think that could be a danger, but right now that's not the actual danger. The actual danger is just not having a book. So I've been too worried about being overindulgent or whatever, or people thinking I'm arrogant. I mean, maybe that's true. Maybe I am overindulgent and arrogant, but um, this will be a finished overindulgent and arrogant book. That's fine. Okay. Um Now, an interesting thing I'm noticing, so I've been typing a little bit on this desk, and this is a standing desk. I'm starting to get a little discomfort in my wrists. Um, now, in some sense that's good because I'm getting that discomfort because I'm actually writing. Uh, another sense that's bad because I don't want to get some sort of RSI. So what I think I'm going to do is take a little break here. So we're about... 53 minutes in. I've written a bit. Uh, and I've got another 40 minutes, I think, before i got to stop. I'm going to take a little break. I mean, I think, you know, a break after 53 minutes is warranted anyway. And I'm also going to see if I can adjust the height of the desk. I think the laptop keyboard should be below uh, my elbows. Is that right? I think right now... My arms are, are either just like parallel to the desk or maybe pointing up a little bit. Uh, I think the position, I'll, I'll look at this online, but I think maybe the desk should be a little lower. I also have an external keyboard. Like, a, yeah, so I could switch to that. I don't think I'm having trouble with the keyboard so much. I think it's probably just my arm position and maybe see if this chair goes up a little bit. Um, but I want to nip that in the bud for sure. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take a little break. Uh, hopefully I'll do another session before I get into my calls today for paper, paper editing and discussions about papers. So, but, uh, made some progress, made some progress. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. All right. Taking a break. Talk to you later.